Some have called it the Wild West. Others, the land of opportunity. With the majestic Rocky Mountains in the backyard and sunsets that need to be seen to be believed. Harvest time in Southern Alberta means the best the world of show jumping has to offer have arrived. The heavily favored Americans are here to win. Will the Belgians, hot off Joost Lansing's win at the World Equestrian Games, maintain their winning momentum? Great Britain has won more Nations Cups at Spruce Meadows than any other nation. With two generations of the Whitaker family on the roster, can Britain extend its record with an 11th victory? How about Team Canada, the host nation? The BMO Nations Cup is the title Ian Miller covets most at Spruce Meadows. With the strongest team we've seen in years, will this be their time to shine and take home gold? Six national teams arrived to compete at the top of the sport. From the 2006 Spruce Meadows Masters in Southern Alberta, it's the BMO Financial Group Nations Cup, a Spruce Meadows classic. Hello and welcome to the Spruce Meadows Television Studios in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm Ian Allison, joined as always by John Garner as we open the vaults today for this edition of the Spruce Meadows Classics and turn the clock back to 2006, a classic by any standard, a great showdown in the BMO Nations Cup and for Canada, a first ever victory. What a day in. The conditions were absolutely spectacular. The uh, template was set for a wonderful story and uh, boy did they deliver. The gold, silver and bronze teams from the recently completed World Equestrian Games, the reigning Olympic champions from the United States, Team Canada in the mix and what an interesting roster Torchy Miller brought to play against the powerhouses of the world. Well it was interesting for sure the, the roster that uh, Torchy Miller had sent out but also on the other side Great Britain, a very similar mix of riders. You look at both leadoff riders, Mario Delorier for Canada, Nick Skelton for Great Britain. Well, there's a wash as far as I'm concerned. Bookend it with your veteran uh, anchor riders. Ian Miller for Canada, Michael Whitaker for Great Britain. Again, they're a wash. Second place, you've got Johnny Pierce for Canada, really stepping up and, and showing his worth as a bit of a journeyman rider. And guess who he's going head to head with? Mark Armstrong. I mean, they're absolutely interchangeable as far as I'm concerned. And then in, in that key third position, Erin Ballard, a young rising star for Canada, and who's she going against? Ellen Whitaker, a young rising star for Great Britain. I mean, incredible. Great Britain had won this event on 10 occasions. Canada close, they'd been silver, they'd been bronze, yeah. they'd never been victorious. It's a day the four that jumped to victory will long remember. The dynamics of the team were, were first rate. Mario was fantastic. Johnny gave us the round we needed and in style was right on it. It was a very, very strong team. Erin is a young one on the team, but boy, there's ice water in that girl's veins. She's what they say, a young old professional. Erin was riding in her first Nations Cup and Ian had ridden at Spruce Meadows on Nations Cup teams when Erin wasn't even born. What other sport would you see? Uh, those two in, on one team. It's your dream to make the team with Ian and to ride with Ian and to have my name associated with him, you know, I'll have that for the rest of my life. Ian's proven it so many times what he can do and the extraordinary things he can do under pressure. Good for Ian, he finishes with just four faults. Given uh, the number of years he's been at it, I think he's more and more comfortable with, with pressure. In fact, I think it probably raises his game. He knows more than anybody. He's your go-to guy. He's the, the rider in the jump off. In many ways, you, you hope not to be named as that, as that rider, but it's a great honor to be named as that rider also because your chef to keep and your team are saying you're the one that they think can do the job. Ian's a great uh, competitor, always tries to do his best and uh, you know, tries hard every class. You can always count on him. It. 
I would say the way it unfolded, we almost backed into it a little bit. We were not in the lead going into the second round. And uh, strong performances again from Aaron and Johnny, and again Ian. And then Mario had a clean round in the first round. Everybody played a part, which is always a nice thing as well. Mario was fantastic. You really need a good score from the first rider to give the confidence and the good feeling to the rest of the team. I had a clean round the first round, and then I had a couple down the second round. But everybody score counted in at least one round, and, and it was a great team effort, and uh, everything happened right at the right time. Oh, it was fantastic. We've been trying to win this BMO Financial Nations Cup for years and years, and it just never has come together for us. <laughs> well, you could tell by the crowd reaction and everybody else's reaction. People are still talking about it. It was it was a very big deal for everybody, including us. We've never won at Spruce Meadows, and it was a big victory for us. You could see all the fans were very excited too. It was a great uh, moment for Canada. The loyalty that BMO has shown us, the fans never got discouraged with the length of time it took. Every year they said, well, this is the year, this is the year. There was such optimism surrounding it. On behalf of Team Canada to step forward for the first time and hoist the Nations Cup. Team Canada, ladies and gentlemen, led by Torchy Miller. For Ian, it was great because he's competed in so many Nations Cup here. And for me too, you know, I started competing here at Nations Cup. I was 19 years old. So uh, it had been a long time coming. It was a great, great thrill. The thrill of victory, something Canada had not tasted in the history of this event leading up to 2006. The Brits, they'd tasted it 10 times, the Americans had won before, but for Britain they had a rookie on their team carrying a bit of pressure because of the last name, Whitaker. Yeah, exactly, and you carry that uh, last name around the world in this sport, and it does come with pressure because it comes with expectations. She'd actually come for the summer tour earlier uh, in the year at Spruce Meadows and equipped herself very well, had uh, won a couple of competitions and was somebody that you could get excited about the future for, for your sport. Nations Cup Day, it's all different. Other nations that had also won here in the past, including Germany and the Netherlands, and then of course the Belgium team, always strong. Well, we talked right off the top about how you set your team out. Belgium had done exactly the same. Ludo Philippot's leading off, and how about Joost Lansing to wrap it all up? I mean, it's just so strong all the way through. The stage was set for what you would refer to as a Bobby Dazzler, the 2006 BMO Nations Cup, when we return. September 2006, Spruce Meadows Classic, the 2006 BMO Financial Group Nations Cup, first round in the books, and Ludo Philipparts leads things off for Belgium in round number two, looking to improve on his four-fault performance. Well, improve he did, in a clear round, and Belgium will need that if they're gonna claw their way back into this thing. The Germans, always a global powerhouse in show jumping, came through the first round with 16 faults as a team, and they were looking to scrap back up the standings. That rail from Holger Volschner probably proved costly as things go along here. Also, Root Jan van der Schans, eight faults. Just not what the uh, orange team wanted. Clear round so important from the leadoff rider as we turn our attention to Jeffrey Wells. Having not competed in many Spruce Meadows Nations Cup, he was riding maybe the hottest horse for the U.S. team in Armani. Yeah, and a lovely clear round, and uh, that will put the Americans on very firm footing. George Morris thrilled about that. Team Canada, having never won the BMO Nations Cup at Spruce Meadows, and things were not looking good as round two got underway, and Mario Delorier led off with 12 faults after going clear in the first round. 
Definitely in with a shout, but you could just feel that sense of optimism from the crowd just dissipate with those rails coming down. Torchy Miller knows there's a long slog ahead, but things have got to get better and in a hurry. Talk about a tough start to the day for Great Britain. Nick Skelton, 21 faults in the first round with the Stallion Russell. Here's a resilience story defined. Ian, in my book, this is the greatest turnaround I've ever seen. And all it really was was a bridle change. They went from a hackamore to a bit in Russell's mouth, and look at the difference there. Wow. What a terrific combination through the years. Nick Skelton and Russell, and they always shone at the Spruce Meadows Masters. Belgium's number two rider, Yves Simon, had a tough day. Nine faults in the first round, 12 in the second. Nice turnaround for Pierre-Louise Alfrecht on the former ride of Michael Whitaker Abriska. She had 12 faults in the first round and clear in round number two. So much can happen in the second round of the Nations Cup. The Netherlands so strong on the international stage and this man delivered a pair of clear rounds, Leopold van Asten, to keep the Dutch in play. Margie Goldstein had a tough go for George Morris's United States of America, eight faults. But what a round for Aaron Ballard and Canada. Clear round, nice return for the young Canadian in her first Spruce Meadows Masters Nations Cup. And that would get the crowd back on the edge of their seats. Great Britain came through round one in first place with just five faults, and things were looking good in round two. Mark Armstrong posting a one-fault trip to go with Nick Skelton's clear round aboard Russell. Well, a solid round for Mark Armstrong and the little mare Thesora, but would that one fault prove costly? So here is confirmation of the second round order of go for round number two in the 2006 BMO Financial Group Nations Cup, a Spruce Meadows Classic, and here with the call on game day, Ian Allison and Linda Southern Hethcott. In the second round of action here at Spruce Meadows, there's also been a clear round posted by Belgium's Ludo Philipparts, and now their third rider in the roster, Francois Maty Jr. We look to improve upon his first round effort, which was a nine fault. The Belgians have a long way to go to get back in the hunt here. And he's already sitting on four faults. I like to look at the third rider in the second round as moving day. You know, you're really gonna see where the teams are at um, and there is a possibility of maybe one team moving ahead with their last rider, but it's an exciting time now because we can really see where the faults are falling. Things are starting to shake out here in the international ring at Spruce Meadows and it's setting up to be a three-way showdown between the United States, Great Britain, and Canada. Again, uh, Francois's horse just does not look sparky. He looks lethargic, very, a little bit tired. You know, he's having a hard time keeping this horse's momentum going. Well, if nothing else, he kept him going a little faster than the first trip around the course. Nine faults in the first round, eight in the second, so no time faults this time around for Francois Maty Jr. Nonetheless, I'm sure he hoped for better than eight. The first obstacle that catches up with Francois is the bicycle jump. Some never really learned to jump it well. The triple combination was picture perfect. There's a look at Belgium's scorecard after three riders. They're certainly going to be looking to drop the 12 faults here in the second round if world champion Jos Lansing comes through for them. Olympic champion from 1996 in Atlanta, Uli Kirchhoff next to go for Germany. And Germany has really uh, improved as well in the second round of competition. Driven off a clear round by Pia Louise Ofrek. Let's see if Uli Kirchhoff with Carino can put them back in the hunt here. Well, with 16 in the first round, and 
at this point, four faults and a zero. They're sitting at 20 faults. If they can keep that at 20, you know, that's a really good position for them. ride through the triple combination. You can see that the riders have figured out how to ride the triple now. Uh, it was There were quite a few problems with it in the first round, but round two, it's not a problem at all. Actually, the British Oxer has been more of a problem than the triple in the second round. And is that a related problem? Is it sort of they've mastered a certain way to putt a green and now there's another problem that results from how they're riding it? I do think so. I think they're letting down just ever so slightly to get over to the British Oxer and again there Ulrich let down. He got over to the Oxer, took it a little bit for granted. You can't take any of the obstacles on course for granted. You have to make sure that you get them all jumped clean. Nor can you take the clock for granted and it looks as though it has caught Uli Kirchhoff with one time fault to go with the four jumping faults. There's the story, five faults here in the second round, and that will not help the moving day cause. Here you see Ulrich riding to this jump. He thinks that he's okay, but as soon as he leaves the ground, he knows that he has the fence down. You can see his head turn to the left. That is not a good thing for a rider to do because it does put their horse off balance. So at this point, the Germans are hoping that they can drop Ulrich Kirchhoff's five faults. Currently sitting on 25 as he departs the stadium. The Dutch also looking for big things from their final two riders. Wim Schroeder is the first of the two aboard Eurocommerce Vancouver. Wim Schroeder was nine faults in the first round. The Dutch overall were 13 faults. And thus far in the second round, they're sitting on eight after two. Wim Schroeder underway. And Wim has an insurmountable task ahead of him. His horse cantered through the water jump, so he's sitting clean so far coming into the water jump. He's really gonna have to create a lot of energy, which could be problematic for the triple combination. Gets over the water. That was a good call, Linda. Gets over the water, but incurs eight faults at the triple combination. Make it 12. The British Oxer is the bogey jump of the second round. It has been an interesting story unfolding how the concerns have changed over the focus of the riders, and as a result, the fences coming down have changed here from round one to round two. He's not carrying all that much speed so the clock could be a concern as he's over the final oxer and time keeps marching on so 13 faults for Wim Schroeder he was nine in the first round 13 in the second not a great day for the Dutch veteran there is a look at the Dutch scorecard after three Molly Ash of the United States wants to keep the U.S. in the hunt here. Thus far in the second round, Jeffrey Wells has delivered a clean. Not a great day for Margie Goldstein thus far. Eight faults in the second round to go with her 16 in the first. So Molly's looking to improve upon her four faults to keep the U.S. in the medal hunt. They were just 12 faults in the first round of competition. Well, and if Molly jumps a clear round and Beezy jumps a clear round, then they will have three clear rounds in the second round for a total score of 12 faults, which puts a lot of pressure on the other teams, being Canada and Great Britain.
time will not be a factor. However, heartbreak at the final fence. Just a little bit too casual, you know, galloped right up there and she didn't protect the front rail. That is a shame. And it could be very costly as there you see the four faults, a quick time for Molly Ash of the United States. But coming down that final line, no problems at the triple. You know, a beautiful ride through the triple. This is a lovely horse, very uh, casual about how he jumps, but he gets to the jumps and really explodes over. Good look at Molly and gets a little bit too much underneath that jump, has four faults and could be very costly. She knows it. You can see it on her face right there. She needed to post a clear round to keep the U.S. in the gold medal hunt and George Morris knows that she maybe dropped the guard a little bit down that last line. There's a look at the American scorecard. John Pierce has the pressure now for Team Canada and he wants to rebound from his first round of competition. John Pierce had eight faults aboard the eight-year-old Archie Bunker. And right now they desperately want to rid themselves of Mario Delorier's 12 faults here in the second round. Well, and he's already conquered one of his mistakes, which was the first jump. He's over the bicycle. So, we, you know, we are partway there. All of the uh, crowd is riding together with John Pierce. This horse does look like he has everything within his realm to be able to jump a good round. John knows what he has to do. He is a veteran of the sport. Very important for him to jump a clear round. Interesting angle over the water, maybe looking for the fresh ground and the good setup into the triple. Touching a few of the rails on course. Three jumps to go and John could post a clear round. He does need to stay on the time allowed. A little bit slow, but one jump. Looks like he's factored in preferring a time fault to a jumping fault. He incurs one time fault. And John Pierce keeps Canada in play here at Spruce Meadows as Aaron Ballard, who posted a clear earlier, goes back to congratulate him. Beautiful ride through the triple combination. And you can hear the crowd, you know, they're so pleased. This puts Canada in a position of having 10 faults with the hope that Ian Miller can jump a clear round. They will drop Mario Delorier's second round score. So they finished round one with nine. And if they drop Mario's score, they will have a total of 10 faults. Uh, assuming Ian jumps clean. This is a big assumption, but let's not turn our attention too far down the road as Ellen Whitaker now takes the British colors into the stadium. She was clear in the first round and the British have come out strong here in round number two. So Ellen could put it to bed for the British. She jumps a clear round. That means their total score in round two would be one fault. Their total score in round one would be five faults, a total of six faults. Now, that would mean they would better the Canadians at 10 faults and the Americans, the best they could do is 16 faults. So the pressure is riding on her and that would also mean that Michael Whitaker would not have to jump two rounds in this Nations Cup. It would be fait accompli, although we have a rail down in the triple. Okay, so we have four faults with Ellen. Now what exactly does that mean? That means we would have a total of 10 faults. So the pressure's now on Team Canada for Ian Miller to deliver a clear, but there's another rail for Ellen Whitaker. So that is now eight faults and it's a new game. This means Michael must come back and ride in the second round because they're hoping to drop Ellen's score at this point. Two rails for Ellen Whitaker, eight jumping faults within the time allowed. That brings Great Britain's second round total to nine faults in combination with the five incurred in the first round of competition.
There's the German vertical that comes down. We have not seen that come down very often today. The two obstacles that are new in the second round that didn't come down in the first round are the British Oxer and the German vertical. The waiting game now starts here and the plot thickens at Spruce Meadows. There's a look at the scores as we've described them. They'll be looking to drop that eight fault. Three quarters of the way through the second round of the 2006 BMO Nations Cup and we have a showdown at the top of the standings. Canada and Great Britain, one rail between them. But there's no sure things in show jumping. There isn't, Ian, and, and it's starting to get tense. Those two have clearly started to separate themselves from the rest of the field. But in Canada's standpoint, we have seen this before. They've been ready to pounce, and they haven't been able to pull the trigger. And we've also seen 10 times Great Britain pull away. What have Miller got and what have Whitaker got? Strong anchor riders for sure. What about Belgium's anchor rider? They're not enjoying a great day, but Jos Lansink is the new world champion of this sport. Well, exactly, and I think Belgium came with the idea of being a real contender. Every team comes with the idea of being a contender. But you got Ludo Philippartz leading off, Lansink bringing up the rear, and a very capable chef to keep in Stanny Van Passion. Stanny Van Passion did not taste victory that day. Since that time, he's gone on to lead the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to medals around the world. <laughs> So I started quite young, you know, I, I did uh, around a hundred uh, of Nations Cups from my own country. That was for me very important because actually I'm a team player. I had a long career with some ups and downs like uh, a lot of riders. Responding better now? Yeah, much better. Huh? In the last ten years I'm actually busy more with team training and and coaching because training a team is different like training an individual rider. It was more work on little details and to be there so for nice them when they need you. Then it, it takes the profit of it and it goes for yeah, like yeah. this. Then you need to be active, huh? He has uh, his own way of, of training which makes him special. He is so calm and cool, <laughs> which is very important for a rider to have uh, you know, this kind of focus. He's always keeping the team together and following the team and definitely helping technically as well. He adapts very good with each rider uh, in his own way and uh, he, he brought a lot for the team. He's a very good trainer and uh, I had a lot of success with him. I had a lot of victories with him. When I was second in the World Equestrian Games with, with Stan, he was with me. He's, he's a great guy and great trainer. Arabia is a World champion Jos Lansing starts the anchor slots for the Six Nations competing here. He's aboard the big chestnut turbo. Now they're vying for national pride and generally not to finish last because one of the traditions at the Spruce Meadows Masters is the last place nation does not return the next year for Nations Cup competition. Belgium was 17 faults in the first round of competition and thus far in round two have a clean, a 12 and an eight. Four faults there at the combination. break on the back rail of the auxer there. A 
an unusual jump to come down. Back rail of jump number 10. Just Lansing sitting at eight faults, which means they cannot better their score uh, with the Belgium riders. They'll finish round two with a total of 16 faults. So in uh, round one, we have 17 faults. In round two, we have 16 faults for a total of 33 faults. It's a tough day in Nations Cup competition when you're keeping two eight fault trips around the course. There's a look at BMO Financial Group's Bill Down taking the Cavaliers salute here in the second round of competition. We're into the home stretch, the heart of the order as it were, Linda. Bill Down will be presenting the Nations Cup to our championship chef and team at the conclusion of this competition. Germany now looking to make a move, if it's possible. Their anchor rider Heinrich Engelmann, who was four faults in the first round. Clearly he will look to improve upon that and help the German cause in the standings here. Four faults, so he is equal with, oh, and eight faults. That is a score that they're not going to use. So the Germans will go with their first three riders in the scoring for the second round, which will mean they will finish at round two with a total of nine faults, adding to first round total of 16 faults for a two round total of 25 faults. At this point, Heinrich is just finishing the round uh, for his team members. His score will not count. They will be posting the final score of the 25 faults. But as a rider, what Heinrich is doing is trying to finish the round off well, to have his horse jump well, confidently because there are other days ahead of him. He wants to make sure that there's no problems with his horse and that he represents his country properly. As he comes down the home stretch, the anchor rider for Germany, Heinrich Engelmann, finishes up with one time fault to go with the Eight jumping faults, a total of nine to finish up his effort at Spruce Meadows. And as we stated, 25 faults for the Germans. The triple combination, good view of that, right down the center. So 16 faults in the first round, nine in the second round for Team Germany. They finish up the day with 25. So they are ahead of Belgium right now in the standings as the anchor for the Dutch takes on the course here. Leon Thiessen aboard Olaf. Dutch had 13 faults in the first round of competition but have not been able to build on that and improve upon it too much here in round number two. Currently, they have an eight, a clear, and a 13. So desperately want to get rid of the 13 faults that was posted by Wim Schroeder. Well, Leon needs to now keep it at four faults. And now what we're seeing is why the anchor rider is so vitally important. The riders, the teams want to improve their score. So they want to be able to drop one of the bad scores that were posted by one of the riders earlier on. They like the anchor to be the go-to guy. And that will not be the case today. However, eight faults is still better than 13 faults from Wim Schroeder. So at this point, Leon is the score that we're going to be using. pick up the pace a bit here or he too will be caught by the clock and it appears he has been for a time fault plus two rails down a total of nine nonetheless it's a score that will be kept by the Dutch eight clean and nine their second round scorecard for a total of 17 there you see it and they finish up the day with 30 faults over two rounds. Well, and that's too bad that he couldn't score a better score because, of course, that puts them behind the Germans at this point. 
BZ Madden looking to post a clear. She would have desperately liked to see one come from Molly Ash, and that would have had the Americans on a clear scorecard here in the second round of competition. However, with the Big Stallion judgment, she is underway now with the United States and Canada still to come with their anchor riders. Easy was four faults in the first round of competition. Clear so far. If easy jumps clear, it means a second round total of four faults which would be added to the 12 faults from the first round for a total of 16 faults. So they would be the leaders at this point. States goes to the lead at Spruce Meadows. BZ Madden, as she's done so many times, posts a clear under pressure aboard Judgment. Within the time allowed. And that will make the United States score over this second round just four faults. This is where she had trouble in the first round, the bicycle. Triple bar to vertical. Look at how far wide she goes to give herself enough room to be able to ride at the bicycle to make sure that Judgment jumps it well. And the triple combination, up and over, up and over, and way up and over. The waiting game commences for the United States right now with just two entries left to go, and you can hear the stadium in the background as Ian Miller prepares to take in style through the paces here. The legendary show jumper from Perth, Ontario, who has been named to nine Canadian Olympic teams in his illustrious career, yet has never won the Nations Cup at Spruce Meadows, and the pressure is clearly on. Linda, a former teammate of yours, he needs to deliver a clear here. Absolutely, a clear puts Canada in the lead ahead of the Americans, and I'm telling you, you can hear a pin drop in this stadium. He's been building this horse up, the 11-year-old in style, since he started developing him as a young horse and in a tongue-in-cheek way said this was his Beijing horse. Well, in style has certainly come along in the last season and showed some great international potential. Now is the time to shine. So far, so good, and I'm, if, Ian jumps a clear round. This crowd is going to be electric. Ooh, a rub there. Three jumps to go. Saturday of the Masters Tournament. Since 1977 has been Nations Cup Day. Canada has yet to lead the victory gallop. Will this be the year? For the final fence, it's clear within the time allowed, and Ian Miller, as he's done so many times, delivers. Much to the delight of the 60,000 in the stadium, who well know that Michael Whitaker still has to come for the British, but they're going to enjoy the moment. Terrific sport. It is so loud in this stadium, it is fantastic. They rode every jump with Ian Miller. He rode every jump to perfection, and he puts Canada clearly in the lead at this point. A total of nine faults in the first round, one fault in the second round, a total of two rounds, 10 faults. It's a simple story. Thanks, Michael Debbie. Whitaker cannot afford a rail. A rail comes down, hey, 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 Canada will be jumping off with Great Britain. And here is the British veteran. Great Britain, five faults in the first round, currently sitting on nine faults, looking to drop the eight fault performance of Ellen Whitaker. A clear round from this anchor rider. 
they must have in order to win. Otherwise, we go into an unprecedented jump off at Spruce Meadows in the BMO Financial Nations Cup. Unless, of course, Michael Whitaker has more than one rail, but I can't. Oh. There's the first one, and not very sporting of the crowd here at Spruce Meadows as a cheer goes up. They certainly understand what is at stake here. Now, if Michael knocks down another jump, Canada's the clear-cut winner. At this point, we're into a jump off. He's as cool as they come. <laughs> Incredible drama here at Spruce Meadows. Michael Whitaker cannot afford a mistake. left time looks all right Linda he's over the final fence we're into a jump off at Spruce Meadows in the Nations Cup Canada and Great Britain jump off course no one Michael Whitaker finishing with four faults putting us into a jump off very rare at Spruce Meadows to ever have a jump off in the Nations Cup now how does it work the chef de keeps nominate one rider to ride for the team, and it comes down to this rail that puts us there. Four faults. Ever so slightly, his horse knocks it. His teammates understand the magnitude of that fence. Michael Whitaker departs the International Stadium. There's a look at how we have arrived at our deadlock after two rounds. A jam-packed audience here at Spruce Meadows not going to miss a moment of this as the riders are now just reviewing the jump-off course in their mind and the lead-off rider has been selected for Canada. It is no surprise to us that the chefs have selected the anchor riders, Ian Miller and Michael Whitaker, to compete for their nations. They understand what's on the line. These are the guys, the go-to guys. They know what's on the line, they know what they have to do, and they're all ready for it. Drama here in the Mountain West of Western Canada as Ian Miller and In Style are going head-to-head -head with Great Britain's Michael Whitaker in a jump off of the BMO Financial Group Nations Cup. An altered course, a heightened course, time will break the ties in the case of a quality of faults. And Ian's strategy will be to go fairly quickly, but to try to jump a clear round to put the pressure on Michael. Here we go, jump number one, jump number two. Ooh, and in style really twisted over that wall. Straight on to 3B. And now we have a roll back to the Belgium Oxer. So far, so good. A new addition to the course, the Butterfly Vertical. 7B, 7C, we've missed 7A. <gasps> the rail at 7B. And Ian has four faults. Now he's got to stay on the time. Over the final obstacle, 45-88. The door has been opened for Great Britain's Michael Whitaker, and the waiting game commences for Ian Miller. And what a long wait it has been, Linda. Oh, and to be so close, and then to have this jump down right there, the hind end doesn't quite work. Four faults. The door is completely wide open for Michael, but Michael still has to jump clean or forward faster or clean and better. 45-88, the time to beat on four or less faults as Ian Miller heads back to the clock tower area. Let's just review this. One, two, three, B. One, that red, yellow, black oxer. Yeah. To the one with the brown plank. Yeah. Okay. Go check inside the Look boat. Inside the, boat. the strategy was to be quick, but not all the cars on the table. Be very efficient and try and leave the jumps up. You have to jump that clean round because if you have a rail down, you're making a present of it. 
So I was not particularly working on speed, I was working on the, on, on the clean round. He rubbed one of the verticals, one of the jumps, and normally that's a good thing if it stays up because when he rubs a jump, then he makes a bigger effort after that. And I thought, this is good that we got away with that rub and that should help us out. He went quick enough to put enough pressure on Michael. And he had one down. And that was just a particularly difficult jump to jump and uh, he shifted just a little bit left off the ground and then the hind end just, just didn't quite follow through and so he had the rail down. Ian's strategy was obviously the right thing. He was fast enough that you, Michael had to take some risks as well. It was hard for Michael too to go back and do a third round so it's a lot of jumping in a very short period of time. Ian's a maestro but Probably one of the fastest riders in the world is Michael Whitaker, so uh, you had to hope the luck was with you. Here we go. Final entry, Michael Whitaker of Great Britain. Now he has to be faster. Four faults for Michael as well. 45-88, the time to beat. And the crowd here is not being very sportsmanlike, but they really want Canada to win. 30 years is a long time. And there's the second rail, and it's in the history books. You can hear the crowd here. Some 60,000 strong, and Ian Miller has the news. <laughs> oh, imagine, 31 years, 31 years it took us. Yeehaw! Hey, I'm going on for 31. Oh, that yawns. Super. Well done. Thank you. Perfect. Well, not only for the members of Team Canada, but for the dedicated fans here at Spruce Meadows, that clutch jump off victory by Ian Miller to finally win the BMO Nations Cup is certainly a memory for the times. Ian, I'm glad how you said clutch jump off victory for Miller as opposed to choke for Michael Whitaker. I remember Michael saying, I think I could run for mayor at this point in this town. Anyway, it was an absolutely fabulous day. Sport won for sure, but proud to be a Canadian. Little doubt about it, the 2006 BMO Nations Cup at the Spruce Meadows Masters, truly a Spruce Meadows classic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how about that for sports drama? Canada jumps to victory in the BMO Financial Group Nations Cup, led by chef to keep Torchy Miller. Torchy, they say you got to wait for great things to happen. You've been waiting a while. I think we, at 29 years, I think we overdid it. Well, you did it with drama when you did it. Tell us about how it unfolded. Well, uh, you can't get it more dramatic than a jump off uh, mano a mano like that, and uh, it worked out for us, but uh, it was a great day for us. Two of the greats in the sport jumping off after two rounds of competition, and the man that had the best seats in the house, Bill Down, wow. That was terrific, Ian. 31 years we've been here, and as Torchy said, the 29th Nations Cup, very exciting. And Torchy, reflect on this. Captain Canada, one time fault, how excited are you? Yeah, and he put in a great performance when he, when he needed it, but he's done that many times. He sure has, and he's also reaped the rewards many times, and he's going to do it again, Bill. But Torchy, it's my pleasure on behalf of all of my colleagues at the BMO Financial Group to present you with this check for $350,000. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, the $350,000 BMO Financial Group Nations Cup. This is Canada's share. But you know what they really jump for, Torchy? I get to take it back in trust, and I'm going to invite you and Bill on behalf of Team Canada to step forward for the first time and hoist the Nations Cup. Team Canada, ladies and gentlemen, led by Torchy Miller.